I know what you're thinking already. What's a guy in a leather jacket gonna tell me about discipline that I don't know already? Well, probably nothing, but it's always good to be reminded of it, right? Because every day is like a battle to get to our purpose. And we all face the exact same spirits of resistance. So discipline, it's self-love, but also the dictionary definition of discipline is a noun the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience a lack of proper parental and school discipline but also the bible says my son do not despise the lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. So, God is loving us through discipline. Uh, that's Proverbs three eleven twelve. 12. Discipline is a measure of self-love, investing in ourselves, and moving from the engine of self-belief. I'd say the crux of the situation is this. How do we make ourselves do stuff we don't feel like doing? Or do we evolve our life in such a way that we start doing the stuff we know we should be doing as a result of resetting our dopamine and prolonged good behavior. Take this moment I'm in right now, for instance. It's about 4.30 in the morning, and I'm doing this. In the last two days, though, I've been way off course and woke up late, indulged in junk food, and generally felt lost and aimless. The discipline of getting back on track becomes much easier because it feels much better to have the direction that the discipline of waking up early and writing or making something provides uh, more. It's, it's, it's better than allowing myself to descend full time into aimlessness. That is actually pain. Aimlessnessness. Aimlessnessnessness. Quote, Bible, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Hebrews something or other. No one will hold your hand and walk you up the mountaintop of a fulfilling life. The encouragement and the courage for that needs to come from within, from our higher self, and from God, which our relationship we also must cultivate on a daily basis. For our lower self will simply not feel like it all the time, especially after the newness of our self-improvement ventures wear off, or if we are mired by bad habits and have yet to even begin them. The newness will wear off. We must often ignore our feelings. The world promotes the idea that we should worship our feelings and be guided by them, but this is wrong. Our feelings will often lead us straight into our comfort zone, depressed and soft. It takes discipline because you will put some effort toward a plan and probably no one will care or you'll get some funky comments and the negative voices in your mind will dominate and your inspiration to do more will be gone and you'll miss a couple days of your routine and you'll want to go back to your lazy comfort zone. Your lazy comfort zone will call you from a shadowy pillow. It will say, come to me, come to me, come to me. The lethargy, lethargy, however you say that word, will dominate. Prepare for this inevitability because it is a hurdle that we all must overcome over and over and over again on the way to a dream fulfilled. It's the same hurdle that we all have to overcome. I'm overcoming it right here, right now in a leather jacket at 6, 4 in the morning, whatever this is. Another quote from the Bible. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on my uh, uh, the laying on of my hands, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. Two Timothy one six through seven. God gives us power, love, and self discipline, and those three aspects are synonymous with each other in a way. Power is discipline. Discipline is love, etc. 
what I like about this verse is we are instructed to fan into the flame of God's gift, cultivate our gift, explore it, and overcome our voices of negativity and fear, which lead to laziness and fear. Fan into the flame, encourage ourselves through action and discipline. Our feelings are not our friend. Our feelings are rooted in faulty thinking, tricking us into self-imposed limitations. In other words, we won't be able to overcome our old limitations by listening to the mechanisms that created those limitations in the first place. Our thoughts and our feelings uh, is what created those limitations. So why would we listen to that? We gotta remind ourselves that our thoughts and our feelings are more often demonic principalities sent from a broken past or demonic future to throw us off our grind or our time fanning the flame of God's gifts. So what are we listening to instead? Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Proverbs 12, one. So if we are not making a God of our feelings, if we are not allowing thoughts and feelings to be our North Star, what then is leading us? The answer is routine and habit. A habit that becomes a routine, a routine that becomes a habit. Beginning our days very early and plugging our minds into presence, meditation, and prayer first thing, and then some form of creative work towards whatever our vision for the future or our purpose may be. The early morning creative energy is unsurpassed, is vital, and is productivity on steroids compared to midday after your mind has been trampled by social media and an influx of endless information or the gossip and dramas of this crazy world, y'all. I would go so far as to say the birthplace of discipline is in the morning routine, the birth of the day. Days when I miss my 4 or 4.30 a.m. wake up, work session are scattered and hard to rope into purpose and discipline that feels like I can actually move the needle on my life. I won't give up entirely on days like that and will still try and do a few things here and there, but the difference is profound. When I get at least two focused hours of creative work uh, in, in upon first waking up, one can move mountains if this becomes routine and a discipline one plugs themselves into no matter how they quote unquote feel next for me is physical exercise breath work meditation prayer and yoga i mean there really is nothing much new under the sun regarding discipline let's face it which is perhaps a good thing get up early pray meditate don't check the phone social media creative work two or three hours towards your purpose and vision of the future then physical fitness yoga lifting running swimming whatever you fancy really that's basically that's basically it and from there cultivate these habits until the only dopamine you allow yourself to have is produced from the work you do towards the vision for your future. And any time you stumble or fall off course, those times will of course happen. You simply course correct and get back on track. Quote, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. That's from Revelations 319. So discipline is love on the path of fanning the flame within the flame of God's gift and grace for a joyful life of abundance and offering. How do you stay disciplined? How do you stay on track? Please comment below and let us know. And uh, good luck each and every day, y'all. Bye.